This is Daughter of Christ. A few weeks ago, Muhammad ibn Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, made some very shocking statements in an interview about rejecting hadiths when it comes to legal punishments and the constitution. This is shocking as Saudi Arabia has always been the stronghold for upholding orthodox Salafi Islam which mandates that Sharia law, meaning the laws and legal punishments in the Quran and Hadith, must be the law of the land, whether it comes to social matters, family law, or matters of the state. However, Prince Muhammad ibn Salman shockingly went on the record saying that the Saudi constitution is based mainly on the Quran and that he would not execute any legal punishment without a clear Quranic text backing it, clearly marginalizing the Hadith. And when the interviewer pushed him on the use of the hadiths also, he said, I must not execute a legal punishment without a clear Quranic text or a clear text from the Sunnah. And when I speak about the Sunnah, I say most hadith writers classified the hadith based on their individual styles, like Bukhari and Muslim and others, saying it's Sahih or Hassan or Daif. But there is a more important classification, he said which is the mutawatir hadith, as in with a continuous chain, or the ahad hadith, meaning the non mutawatir as in not with a continuous chain, even with more than one narrator, is not acceptable. And the khabar hadith, meaning the ones that may be true or false, are also not acceptable. Thereby, the prince has distanced himself from most hadiths, which include the Bukhari and Muslim collections, saying that he rejects their methods of classification of authenticity. Among the hadith that the prince rejects is an ahad hadith that tells Muslims to face the Kaaba in their prayers after having faced Jerusalem and is narrated only by one person. Muslims, including the prince, still follow this today. This is shocking as he is effectively rejecting the vast majority of hadiths and also rejecting the traditional ways of the main hadith collectors like Bukhari and Muslim because even their sahih hadiths they authenticated may not be good enough, according to the prince. When this is applied practically, it would mean that more than 90% of Muhammad's hadiths are no longer acceptable, effectively wiping out almost all hadith collections from Muslim tradition and suspending their use as a source of law. The crown prince also said that Saudi constitution is not to bind itself to any specific school of thought because the door of improvisation is forever open, brazenly and bravely undermining the major schools of thought of Sunni Islam that have been followed and revered for centuries. And his statement about the, quote, opening the door of improvisation, end quote, clearly means opening the door of reform and change to the tenets of Sharia that have been so far untouchable. He concluded his shocking statements by saying that these measures are necessary because Saudi Arabia has been victim to radicalization and extremism for far too long and it was time to define the sources more strictly to avoid further damage. This is a very significant and unprecedented public undermining of the Hadith tradition from the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia the stronghold of Islam, an official rejection of most hadiths, including Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, authentic sayings of Muhammad himself, that have been for centuries second only to the Quran. Isn't it amazing the crown prince of Saudi has gone on the record rejecting most of the hadiths of Muhammad himself? What's more amazing is actually the response. Believe it or not, there was a big sigh of relief and widespread acceptance of the prince's statements. Shockingly, Ahmad al-Tayyib, the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, tweeted his support of this new reformation to Islam, saying that Muslims must not hold the jurisprudence and legal tradition as sacred as this leads to rigid ways of thinking in today's Islam. He said, when some people hold on tightly to the literal words that came in the legal rulings of the past, they are being rigid as those very rulings were themselves new and contemporary at their own time. He tweeted on the 10th of May 2021, quote, The most dangerous obstacles to renewal are archaic fatwas that no longer benefit Muslims today and the spread of harmful fatwas, ignorance of Islam and its sciences and traditions and distorting the sacred things of Islam, end quote. The media noticed how similar his words were to those of the Crown Prince of Saudi about the renewing and reformation of the Islamic thinking and only depending on the Quran and a minority of hadiths. It was also noticed that the Grand Imam had changed his tone from a previously stricter and more orthodox tone to a one more flexible and open to reform. 
When a prominent Egyptian journalist and presenter Amr Adib was questioned on this change of tack, he said, sure, it is the beginning of a real reformation and a return to reality. Muslims in the public eye, and even regular Muslims in common sections, were seen to widely support and encourage this as a brave and progressive step to a better humanity and asking how they can help. So, in summary, the Crown Prince of Saudi talks about rejecting the vast majority of hadiths. The Grand Imam of Al-Azhar and the Muslim public opinion encourage it and collectively breathe a sigh of relief. Is this the beginning of a Quran-only movement in Islam? And are Muslims now starting to officially reject and abrogate their religion? Why? Is it embarrassment? Is it shame? Or are they themselves finally tired of living under Islamic law?